there's a cross members up on the lean to. Time to start thatching our roof. I like it. Hiking up to a high point for more scouting purposes. I think it sucks about winter time. It's so daylight limited. Wind's kicking up about 25 miles an hour. Arm Serenity leading the pack up there as I carry all the photo equipment. As usual, to record for posterity. 2009. What we're doing is we want to hike in for a certain TMP project I'm planning. We're going to see if we've got the terrain on the other side of this hill. There's a bit of video from past Net and Fancy Adventures in all sorts of climates and locations. Hopefully a lot more to come. Uh, as I've said on camera, dudes, I highly recommend you get out and make your own adventures. Uh, the world is your oyster. If you can just stay healthy, make the time in your busy schedules, make it happen, dudes. Take lots of pictures. Make those memories. You'll treasure them. You're, you'll be so glad you got out, got out with your friends and family and uh, made it happen. And if you've noticed, the weather doesn't slow me down too much. It doesn't slow down the TMP crew too much, whoever that might be with me that day. Uh, in fact, I, I don't know, maybe it's a gear reviewer in me. I actually dig it when the weather's really bad. I like that because it's an opportunity to test uh, systems for one, all kinds. I'm talking backpacking systems, clothing systems, which we'll talk about in this review, uh, gun systems and whatnot. It's a great test for that. It's also a test for you and your mental toughness and your ability to stay comfortable in very difficult conditions. Okay, I'm a big advocate of being prepared though. Uh, you may have gathered that in my videos. And this is another item that you might want to add to your loadout. This is an outerwear review world by Net and Fancy, hello. And it's my object in life to hook you up with high value, very serviceable, durable gear that won't blow your bank account out. I'm gonna start it off with this. Uh, we'll go down the talking points, I'll mix them up, probably forget information, but you'll have a good feel of the item after I'm done and whether it's gonna fit your system or not. What is it? It is a Wind Challenger fleece jacket by L.L. Bean. By way of disclosure, I was an L.L. Bean field tester for like a long time, uh, almost a decade, and I finally just kinda of went on sabbatical because it's a lot of work and I put a lot of effort into my reviews. <coughs> <clears throat> Maybe you've seen that in YouTube. Um, the cool thing about me doing it for the world in YouTube is everybody gets to benefit as opposed to me just doing LLB merchandise. It's catalog only, very select uh, group of consumers. Um, so I say that because I don't want the guys to think though that I'm promoting LLB because I had an association with them. I'm promoting this jacket just because it freaking rocks. Okay, and no, this wasn't given to me. I bought it. Everything I tested at L.L. Bean was always a pre-production sample sent to me as a uh, field tester, generally an extra large or large sizing. I wear talls. It generally doesn't fit me. We'll talk about sizing here in a second. So I had to get my own sizes, and to me, it's worth spending the money to get something that fits. Uh, and yeah, I did field test. This was a field tested item for me. Uh, the other one didn't fit me so well, so I went out and bought one that did. Uh, actually, several, because I've been using this jacket, and there's another one in the background. See, here's another one right here for many, many years. Let's get on with it, man. I'm going to try to make it as expeditious as possible. I know you're busy like me. Let's rock and roll. What makes this special? First off, the fabric stitching and overall quality of all L.O. Bean stuff rocks. The reason I'm doing this jacket first is because it is going to be my reference, at least one of my reference pieces for a fleece jacket overall. Uh, it's a very useful piece of kit um, because you can layer it underneath Gore-Tex, you can wear it alone. Uh, yes, I know there's systems like Columbia has that have their own zip-in fleece jackets. Um, I understand that, but as a standalone garment, very versatile with a very wide temperature range, you're gonna be hard pressed to beat um, the L.L. Bean Wind Challenger fleece outerwear, especially for the price you're going to pay. The fabric is Polartec Wind Block Fleece. 
It's coated with DWR. That's a dur durable water repellency. And I have a water bottle here. I bet you mine's wore off. It generally does. It doesn't last too long. Oh, it's still working. See how that's beating up water a little bit? If you wash your jacket and then you dry it in the dryer, that's supposed to re restore that DWR to a certain extent. Don't count on it to keep you dry. It doesn't. It's just good for a sprinkle here and there. If you're caught in a downpour, that DWR is going to absolutely fail on you. It has me in all types of dark garments. You're going to get soaked. Wind, uh, wind block fleece, though, is outstanding. It is a reference fleece. It's a lighter weight fleece. I would say around the 200 weight because Polar Tech comes in different weights. 100, 200, 300 uh, is kind of the expedition weight. And then they have the shearling varieties. Um, I'll talk about this here in a second. The way a fleece keeps you warm is, tr warm is trapping dead air. Okay, this will do it to a certain extent, but this is a mid-weight fleece. It's not designed to be super, super warm. It's designed pretty much to be a cool weather jacket, maybe a layering jacket. Um, the big benefit of the Wind Challenger fleece jacket um, by L.L. Bean is that it does have that wind blocking capability in a very comfortable low nap fleece. Against your skin, it's very comfortable. <coughs> Excuse me. And more importantly, when I get to the talking point of, damn, that's right, damn, where did it go? There it is, dead airspace management. What do you know? A new nothing fancy term. Uh, damn. <laughs> uh, to keep that warm air inside the jacket is a challenge. If you're wearing normal fleece, it's going to blow right out. The Wind Challenger fleece is actually very windproof, having been tested by me for many years. Absolutely love it. A little bit more expensive, and yes, there's several knockoffs on the technology, as there always are. Uh, you will not go wrong with anything Polar Tech. If you can roll it into whatever garment you're getting, excellent. Everything with the LLB makes, the stitching is usually pretty squared away. Love it. Notice the interior attention to detail. You have that seam tape there, and it's double stitched. Why is that important? Because your interior of your jacket is a very high wear and tear area. Either you better have it seam taped like it does on the collar here, or you better have like double stitching on all the seams, especially fleece. Uh, at, this jacket here is probably about four or five years old. You can see there's absolutely no unraveling going on at all. Stitching is superb throughout. Uh, very uniform. This is not unusual. This is pretty much a standard in all jackets. Once in a while you will find stitching problems that come unraveled uh, and they're problematic, but not from major brands like the North Face, Patagonia, which I think is like outrageously priced. Um, Campmore has some good garments and uh, their stuff is stitched well too. No problems here. So superior fabric. I love the Windblock uh, fleece. Very comfortable. And that gets to our next talking point moving right along. Comfort's huge. Do not underestimate. I hope this is coming on, on camera well because this is a black jacket. I'm not so sure. We'll just have to roll the dice. <coughs> if your jacket's not comfortable, you'll probably find yourself not wearing it. Okay, and I'm going to jump down to collar design because this is another important part of comfort. I've seen and worn a lot of co uh, collars both in the field testing process and in my own outerwear garments where the collar's jacked up. Maybe they put subplex nylon here, but against the skin, especially when your beard grows out, very uncomfortable. Again, the Polar Tech fleece, all varieties, pretty much very comfortable. And also, it doesn't rustle. It's a very quiet fabric. Have you ever worn a jacket in the cold weather when it gets really cold and starts crinkling and making a lot of noise and rustling? It's irritating, okay? And again, with fleece, you won't have that problem. Now, some guys may opt to go hard shell. Do you know what I'm talking about? That is a hard polyester or nylon exterior on your, on your fleece. And I like those too. They're excellent. The Wind Challenger, and sorry, this is a dirty jacket. I mean, black kind of shows every speck of dirt and stuff. I haven't washed it for a while. <clears throat> but uh, you don't have that with this. Um, I don't mind the hard shell uh, options. Actually, I dig them. They're cool. But this has a very subdued and understated appearance. Sometimes when you go with a hard shell exterior, here's a little philosophy, it looks very technical, and that might not be the, the look you're going for. This is a very versatile look. This is just a black, low nap fleece. And by the way, let me say that. Some of your lower quality fleeces are going to pill up 
over time they're gonna peel and fuzz up. You'll buy your department store fleeces sometimes are this way. This is about as much as you'll see it peel up. You see that? That's a high wear area in the collar on this Polartec Windblock fleece. No pilling. Again, you're getting what you pay for and that is a very high quality fleece jacket. Comfort is superb. And when we talk about comfort, we kind of need to talk about temperature range, yo. In other words, what kind of temperature range can your jacket flex to? This is a very important thing to consider. You don't want a narrow temperature range. In other words, sometimes if you go with a heavier weight fleece, maybe the Shearling, the Polartec 300s, or maybe with a down jacket and other types of outerwear, here's what happens to your temperature comfort range. It narrows because as your activity level goes up, you start generating too much heat, you get too much warm dead air space, you may or may not be able to ventilate that out to compensate and thus minimizing your moisture production. That's very important in snowy conditions or cold and wet conditions is your body's moisture is a problem. Somehow that has got to escape your garment. If it doesn't, it gets trapped inside. You become cold and clammy when you stop moving. Next thing you know, you're chilled to the bone. Bad juju, man. Don't do that. Um, this has a wide comfort range, namely because of the technology. The Windblock Pro Fleece Dudes is very breathable. It's not like Gore-Tex, even though it uses a very similar technology. The Gore-Tex has smaller uh, uh, holes or microscopic uh, punctures in the membrane to allow transpiration across a membrane. Uh, Windblock allows even more, not waterproof, but it's windproof. <clears throat> That's good because your garment breathes. As your activity level in this jacket, the Wind Pro, I'm saying that with the Wind Challenger, screw these names up all the time. Yeah, the Wind Challenger, as your activity level rises, you'll still be able to ventilate your jacket. And so maybe if the temperature is 20 degrees, you might be a little bit chilly. You might layer up, put an exterior, uh, I don't know, <coughs> Gore Tex parka or something on the exterior of this, warm up. But as you know, you start hiking or running and gunning, this will work just fine for you. Great temperature range on this jacket. It's superb. Great freedom of movement too. There's no, uh, I don't know, binding in this area right here, in the underarm pit area. And I think the cut of this jacket is perfect. It, it's not too loose, it's not too trim. Just right, uh, I, I really like it. Again, I'm about 200 pounds, six foot three. Um, so that's how I'm sized. Colors are pretty much excellent on the Wind Challenger. LL Bean, time to time, this is an older catalog, but I think it's pretty representative of what's out there. Time to time, they'll vary their colors. You can see representations right here. There's the mountain red, the black carbon, which you're looking at in front of the camera, the black spruce. By the way, I've seen this color. That's kind of a brighter green that is uh, depicted here, so be careful. You may or may not want that brighter green. Excuse me, and the camera uh, and their catalog doesn't capture it very well. The dark taupe, that is a cool color right there. And yes, they have it in a hooded version too. You're seeing the hoodless version, which I actually recommend first, but you can get it in the hooded version as well. Uh, let me make sure my notes. They also have a blue, blue and slate blue, which is actually very good looking. You might like that. For my money and for the versatility, I choose black. Um, I'm not really going after a military look, a tactical look. This is an overall garment I want to be able to play in a lot of different venues. Black, you just can't go wrong with. Of course, it shows that dirt and stuff, but just like a black car does, you just got to keep it uh, clean. The weight is decent. It is, is it the lightest weight fleece out there? Nope, it's not. There's lighter weight options for sure. Uh, a lot of that will speak to what kind of zippers they have. You can see that this is a high quality YKK zipper. Yes, I've had YKK fail on me. They're not like bulletproof. Everything can fail on you. Overall though, I've had outstanding durability from them. Oh, and here's another benefit of buying L.L. Bean. If in the years to come you have any problems with your L.L. Bean merchandise, send it back and they will fix it free of charge. No, L.L. Bean's not the only ones that do this. Kelty is outstanding at this. Um, a lot of the manufacturers are. Always send it back, give them the option. And what they'll probably do, let's say this zipper did totally blow out, they'll just sew in a new zipper for you and send your garment back to you. Uh, they may replace it if they still manufacture it, but the problem is some. this has been in the line of Ella Bean for a long time because it's a very popular seller. But you never know. Next year it could be discontinued. Um, but getting back to the weight issue, the zippers have a lot to do that with that. I didn't weigh it and it's really no point in doing it because it may or may not be representative of the size you get. And that takes us to sizing. 
I wear longs. I have long arms, and whenever possible, I wear longs, you know, get the extended lengths and I, if I can. Another huge benefit for you tall guys like me is they have the tall sizes. I love that. Ella Bean such, does such an excellent job with that. You can find a jacket that will fit you. I find their sizing to be pretty accurate. In other words, if you're a large tall, Ella Bean large tall will generally be what you need. Okay, cool talking point coming up. Damn! Dead airspace management. Okay, what is that? Again, the way you stay warm is by creating dead airspace, warming that airspace up, and managing it, if you will. Again, that's a nothing fancy term. What do you, if you are sedentary, you're not exercising a lot, what you want to do is really hold that in or retain it. And that gets to the retention side of the dam factor. In other words, how do we best hold that in? Again, this is a mid-weight fleece jacket. This isn't a super cold weather jacket, so don't expect it to perform miracles for you. Some guys expect that, and gals for that matter. They want it to stay warm with a jacket just like this down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's asking a bit much. Now, in order to do that, um, they have elasticized cuffs on the sleeves, so that's going to prevent the wind coming in your sleeve area, flushing out that warm, uh, that warm air. You might notice that there's no really uh, fabric backing on the zipper. Uh, some will call it a weather guard. That's lacking. Now some will say, well that's a miss. Well not really because the philosophy of use on this jacket is a cool weather garment. Okay, and actually in a lot of ways that I've used my garment, I like it because I can get some flush coming through the zipper and I call flush ventilation when I'm producing a lot of heat. Okay, uh, the newer models of Wind Challenger have a drawstring on the bottom hem. You see that in this picture right here. Mine is an earlier version. It does not have that, but that's another way to retain the heat whenever possible. Great collar design. I think I've mentioned that. Has a comfort flap right here. That's so the zipper doesn't abrade your chin. Zips up. And I think the opening on the neck is just right. Not too tight where it's uncomfortable. I've seen some. I think some Patagonia models that are really tight against neck. This one's just right. Um, so there, that is about it as far as retaining the heat. Um, as far as ventilation goes, they make the point that you can open up the zippers and there's those fleece pockets, or not fleece, but mesh pockets where you can get some flush coming in through here to pump out that excess heat if you have it. Okay, again, no pit zips. You know, some guys say, well, you should have pit zips. Well, again, this is not a super technical jacket, nor is it a super expensive jacket. You want to add all those features. You're going to add weight and you're going to add cost. Generally speaking, there are some exceptions to the rule, which I'm going to talk about in future reviews, but generally you'll do that. Um, how do I feel overall with the uh, Wind Challenger as far as the dam factor goes? Pretty darn good. I've never found it wanting in the rolls that I've put it in. Just enough amount of warmth uh, for most of my activities. If I need more, I go to something else. Okay, I've got lots of outerwear options in my inventory, but this is one of my most heavily used in all types of temperature, temperature conditions because it's so comfortable. On the inside, on the outside, it's just excellent. And I hope I represented that properly on the inside. Um, <clears throat> by the way, this is a good thing. Anytime you see this, it adds a little bit of weight Okay, this is a, uh, of course, what am I trying to say, a mesh interior here, at least on the front side. And the reason they have there, of course, is the pocket. I'm kind of jumping ahead on storage. Big old pocket, great place for all types of things, including sunglasses right here. But it also creates more dead air space and ventilation. Not that you really need it with fleece, because fleece is so absorbent and breathable as it is. But... Generally, having mesh on the interior will help your dam factor going. That's a funny term, isn't it? Damn! I couldn't think of any way else to say that other than that. I probably forgot some stuff on that, but I want to move along. I want to make this review as quick as I can. Zippers, outstanding. YKK, no pit zips. No, I don't care if they have them or not, especially on a fleece jacket. I mean, it's so breathable. When you really need pit zips, uh, philosophy alert from Nothing Fancy, here it comes is when your garment's not super breathable, in my opinion. When you have a Gore-Tex membrane, because Gore-Tex, honestly, dudes, really is not, it does breathe, but in my experience, you will condensate with Gore-Tex under high exertion. 
and that's when you really need some pit zips. When your membrane does not allow the interchange to a high level, that it cannot keep up with all the moisture you're creating from your own body. Pit zips open, you uh, open your ventilation on the damp side of the equation and you start moving out that dead air in order to ventilate. Collar design, excellent. There's no hood in this one. If you want one, like I said, and you saw right here, get one, you're gonna pay a little bit extra for it. Not that I don't like the hood version, but the way I use my jacket, which is in my jobs, uh, it's nice to have. It's, you know, it's a little bit much to have a hood flopping around all the time, and it does not roll into the collar like some other designs. And so, the way I use my jacket, sometimes it's in the way. If you're gonna be really using your wind challenger in hardcore outdoor environments, you know you're gonna need a hood, get one. Sleeve design is excellent. No problems there. Uh, this is like a spandex binding. You kind of see a little bit of wear and tear there. Wear nicely though. I mean, for four years of use, five years of use, that's about all we have to show for it. That's a high quality garment there, dudes. By the way, when I talk about sleeve design, this is why I made it its own talking point. It's critical because it can jack up the entire garment. Um, if I have too big of a, a cumbersome uh, attachment up here that's overly technical, for a mid-weight outerwear garment like this one, I find myself not digging it and not wearing it. What I'm talking about is like an elasticized drawstring here or something else that's kind of goofy that uh, just makes it cumbersome. Also in sleeve design, at least for me, I have long arms, is ha are the sleeves long enough? Um, a minor hit on L.L. Bean is some of their garments, some of their outerwear options have shorter sleeves, even in the talls. They'll say it's a tall and sometimes, um, you know, it still doesn't come all the way to right about there. That's where I like to have a sleeve come. Even, and if I extend out, I don't want it to ride way up on my arm. And trust me, I took this up with Ella Bean several times in my write-ups, always striving to say, hey dudes, add an extra, in uh, not an inch, but at least a half an inch, three quarter inch to all your sleeve lengths. I rarely hear complaints about guys saying, well, the sleeves are too long, um, unless they just chose the wrong size. But I will ha I'm happy to say they finally squared away, and in the newer versions of the Wind Challenger, sleeve length is just right. You know, could it be a little bit better? Maybe. Um, but for me, I don't notice, notice it to be obnoxious at all. Takes us to the next talking point. Storage. What kind of crap can you carry in your jacket? Again, in this POU, this philosophy of use for this type of jacket, I don't need a ton of storage space. It just becomes bulky. Um, for this type of jacket, um, you get two side pockets, mesh interiors. They're rather large too, so they can carry a lot of stuff. I really, really like that. When I did my original review on the Wind Challenger, I gave big kudos to L.L. Bean for their big pockets. Uh, in some other reviews I did, of different jackets, they did not have this, and I wrote it up and I said, listen, um, you, you guys need to make big pockets on the side. I don't know if I had any influence on those decisions, but they're doing it, and that's important because you can jam gloves in there, your iPod, your cameras, I've done all of that and more. You know, some mags if you're doing a run and gun. Zip it up, great zippers, and I think I added these zipper pulls. They might be including them now. Uh, on this one, I think I threw some Campmore zipper pulls. But latest versions of the Wind Challenger jacket, I think they have that. And again, that bottom hem on the newer versions is going to be uh, elasticized with a drawstring, which is extra cool. I already showed you that interior pocket, and that's about it for storage. You have one on each side, so a total of four pockets. Uh, let me just say this. In the years of use of this jacket, I've never said, crap, I wish I had a place to put that. I just haven't. I've always, I've always had it work out. Um, for this type of jacket. And again, if I need more storage area, I go to some other system to carry it. Uh, it's good to have something integrated though. Durability and care. Man, we're moving along, dudes. You're looking at it. I mean, this is uh, you know a jacket that's been under hard use. This one in the background, same color. It's also a Wind Challenger. Even an earlier version with slightly different colorations. You kind of see that. They do will change the colors as time goes on. 
It's just excellent. I mean, they just wear and tear so nicely. Um, highly durable, and that gets back to the fabric and stitching, doesn't it? They chose quality materials, the Polar Tech Windblock Fleece. They stitched it up right. Um, they have outstanding quality control at L.L. Bean. They always have, and they back it with a lifetime warranty, okay? Uh, do I sound like a commercial? Whatever. It's good stuff, you know, and I want to turn you guys on the good stuff. Um, the care is easy. It's right here on the reverse tag. You can read it if you're interested. Um, just, you know, wash it warm, tumble it. I throw a dryer sheet in there and you're good. You know, that DWR, let's see how this one is. This one's been washed a lot. The durable water repellency, it's still there. See that, how it's beating up water? That's the DWR. And again, drying it in a dryer is how that's going to uh, restore that. Uh, you know, it's just good for a little shower here and there, maybe spills more likely. Finally, value. Competitive alternates. What else is out there um, that would be as good as this? Uh, I will say probably lots. There are so many offerings in the outdoor industry for fleece jackets. There's no way I'm going to say that this is the absolute best. Uh, I think it stands against, hang on, drop something. I think it stands the test of time. And to me, that is the most important element for a piece of quality outerwear. And whatever adventure you're gonna throw it in, it needs to stand the test of time, both in durability, in sales. In other words, it's still continuing in the LL Bean lineup, at least as of early 2010. Yes, there's been some other great uh, garments that have not withstood the test of time, uh, kind of like their Anorak, they sat, sadly discontinued. I talked about that in my extended stay series of videos. That was a garment the guys just didn't get it. At least Americans didn't. I think Europeans are all over it. Um, but sadly, that wasn't continued. But this one's just chugging away. It's standing the test of time. Um, it's going to stack up against, in my opinion, it, with this type of fleece jacket, any others in the world. Uh, I've used more than a few over my years. And this is one of my favorites. And another reason is because it is reasonably priced. You're getting a name brand Polar Tech fleece. That's the wind block variety. Uh, and I think I said spandex. It's actually Lycra elastane cuffs is what the name was. It was. Sorry about that. But here's your prices. And they're still the same. I think this catalog I have. Uh, what is it from? Oh, it's 08. See, winter 2008. So outdoor winter catalog, L.L. Bean. So it's been in my inventory for a while. The prices are still the same. So regular $69, tall $79. If you want a hooded, you're going to add 10 bucks to that. Even if you pay that price, I think it's fair. Okay? But it gets even better. If you watch the sales at L.L. Bean, and by the way, there's a great time, at least when I posted this video, to go cruise and see what's on sale at L.L. Bean. They clear this thing out for 39 bucks at times. 39 bucks. That's when I got these. Uh, at least one of them. The other one I just paid, uh, whatever it was, 79 bucks for. Totally worth it. It will probably be your most used fabric item. It really will. Uh, it's not fabric, but um, outerwear item. I was looking at my watch. I got to book it. Um, because it's so comfortable, so well made, it's relatively lightweight, it's got good storage options, it, the sizing on it is superb, so are the colors, you can get pretty much any kind of color you want according to your philosophy of use. If you want something subdued, black is a great color, the taupe as of 2010 being offered, outstanding option. It's just super comfortable. I absolutely love it. I give it my highest rating. That's the LL Bean Wind Challenger Fleece Jacket. I will roll a couple more in front of the camera if I think they warrant the attention in front of the outstanding Nothing Fancy audience. That's Nothing Fancy's review. Thanks, guys. Hope it helps you. More coming your way when I get time. See ya.